This video is a really brief overview of knowledge into sexual infections. There are four main organisms that lead to sexually shared infections. The following slides contain an A to Z of some of the key ones seen in the UK. A wonderful resource from Public Health England is the Sexual and Reproductive Health Profiles. Click the Start button and you can get into statistics and work them out nationally, regionally and even locally. Public Health England also create these freely available PowerPoint slide sets of sexual infections across the country. If you're living in other parts of the UK, you'd need to check out the website for the health department of your own particular government. Here's a list of the major sexually transmitted or sexually acquired infections as seen throughout the UK. Make sure you know the difference between sexual infections and genital infections. As this is a really brief overview, I'll give you some details about each infection, but without going into great depth. Chlamydia is probably one of the best known infections um, in the UK at the moment because of its high profile over the last few years. However, in about 80% of women and about 50% of men, there'll be no signs or symptoms of infection. Even as recently as World War II, so many of the sexual health posters were actually blaming of women. Gonorrhea is certainly making a comeback at the moment across the UK, and there are even a very few cases of multi-drug resistant gonorrhea. That causes problems for the future because once the antibiotics no longer work, it means that gonorrhea may become untreatable. Similar to chlamydia, gonorrhea sometimes presents without any signs or symptoms. It's also worth remembering that infections such as chlamydia and gonorrhea can also be found in the throat and the rectum as well as in the vagina and in the male urethra. Genital warts are caused by the human papilloma virus, HPV, of which there are over a hundred different strains, but only four of these are sexually uh, acquired. This poster was designed by one of the master students in sexual health at the University of Greenwich and she achieved first prize for best produced poster at the conference that she presented at. Four strains of HPV can lead to genital warts. Two of those can also lead to cancers. That's why the HPV vaccination program being rolled out is a really important initiative for everyone. There are two main strains of herpes simplex virus, HSV. HSV2 is the genital one and HSV1 is the usual cold sore that many people have on their mouths. Oral herpes, HSV1, can be passed genitally. Sexual health services can provide antiretroviral medication which can abort the life cycle of HSV, but it's not a cure. There are numerous hepatitis viruses around the world, but the main ones in the UK in relation to sex are B and sometimes C through condomless sex and A from oroanal sex or rimming, but there are safe vaccines against both A and B. Around the world, the majority of people living with HIV have acquired it through condomless sex. You'll notice with some of the images here how they've changed over the decades, from the fear and the death motifs of the early 1980s, right through to this smiling face for rapid HIV testing now in the 21st century. There are three key modes of HIV transmission, which I cover fully in the HIV Foundation session. These are through condomless sex, three times in relation to midwifery, and three times in relation to blood. The window period refers to the time lapse between the moment a person becomes infected with HIV until antibodies to the virus are detectable in blood. That used to be about three months, but with newer testing kits, the period is now becoming much shorter. HIV is not as easy to acquire as some other infections, such as hepatitis B. It's really important to emphasize here quantity, quality and route of transmission. If any of these three are broken, then it's not possible for HIV to pass from one person to another. This image shows the life cycle of HIV once it enters a person's bloodstream. I cover it more in the HIV Foundation session, 
but it's important to point out that the anti-HIV medications abort the life cycle of HIV at each of these various stages. Non-specific urethritis is inflammation of the urethra without any pathogens to infections necessarily found. The third bullet point on this slide shows that sometimes the cause of um, NSU may be unknown. It may be due to certain sexual practices or more frequent occurrence of them, as well as different pathogens, some of which may be unknown at the moment. Pubic lice, or Pediculosis pubis, are normally sexually shared. They like living in hot, moist places, and therefore they enjoy being passed from one person to another during hot, moist experiences. Point three on here shows that pubic lice are normally sexually shared, but due to stigma and shame, look how many people may claim that they've got them from, uh, from inanimate objects. Scabies is another skin infection, but this one can be transmitted um, from inanimate object. You'll notice on this slide how scabies is highly contagious, and therefore it's really important when you're dealing with clients' clothing um, or objects that they've touched. There are three key stages of syphilis, primary infection, secondary syphilis, as shown in the photograph here, which may be about 12 months later, and third stage, third stage or tertiary syphilis, which could be 15, 30 years later. Even though syphilis is successfully treated with antibiotics, you can see here the rise in the number of cases over the last few years. Undiagnosed and untreated syphilis can actually lead to major complications for a person's life and an untimely death. It also has major implications during pregnancy too, as it can be cut past vertically. The final sexual infection to talk about here is Trichomonas vaginalis, or TV. It's probably one of the infections that's least known by the general population. It's important that TV is diagnosed and effectively treated, not just for individuals themselves, but for any women who are pregnant and with TV, it can have detrimental outcomes on the pregnancy. Here's just a tiny number of useful websites that you might find useful. Can I draw your attention to the very bottom one? which refers to a free sexual, reproductive and mental health course um, actually written by a professor of psychiatry, a psychologist and myself a few years ago. Thanks so much for working through this video. It's been a very brief overview of some of the key sexual infections that we come across here in the UK. Thanks so much. Bye bye.